Hey guys, Tyler with Independence Overland. So today I want to go over some things that I started thinking about while I was editing my recent series to the Pacific Northwest. And so I thought I'd put a video together talking about the things you might need or you might not think about for the long-term trips. A lot of the things that I'm going to talk about might seem obvious to some of you, but uh, for beginners, I just think that there's a lot of people who don't really think about some of this stuff. Some of this gear I've mentioned before in other videos, but I know some people just dive into videos and they're only going to watch this one video from me and they'll never see me again. So I thought I would compile some of this information to help some of you that might be getting into this because honestly, you do not need a vehicle like this. Um, we could have done all of our Pacific Northwest trip with a stock four wheel drive. I'm pretty positive of that. Now, while I have used this FJ to its full capabilities, uh, I just don't think that you need to worry about some of these things until you're more experienced, more brave. So I wanna to touch on some of the things that I think are more important than getting steel bumpers and all that. I know it makes the vehicle look cool, but it's not gonna help you in the long run. I know the vast majority of trips are only like three days, two to three days, but I encourage you to plan for a longer journey. While you're building your vehicle, plan for like a week long trip. If you're getting poor sleep and you're eating poorly and things like that, it can really add up to a bad trip. So I just wanna go over some things that I think will help you in your decision making as you're starting to build a vehicle. I can't do this video without going over refrigerators. I know it's kind of obvious in today's world, these things are so attainable at this point as something like this was a $1,400 fridge. You've got companies like Iceco that are coming out with really high quality units. This one has a C-Cop or Danfoss uh, compressor. So this refrigerator does have a very high quality compressor in it. And it is a smaller quote unquote light duty fridge. And again, I did a whole review on this, I'll link that. But I just wanna go over this little refrigerator because this is the most affordable option I have. I've used very high-end refrigerators and I've used very cheap refrigerators. If you read about cheap refrigerators and reviews on like Amazon, you'll read people say things like, oh, we just chill everything and then put it in there and then it does great. You're buying a fridge, it's not a cool box. So it should be able to cool down everything that's inside of there. This fridge can do that from Iceco. This fridge can do that. Don't go too cheap, but there are things that are more affordable than they used to be, such as Iceco. Put stuff in here that's warm, it gets cold. I know that sounds like common sense, but there are cheap refrigerators all over the internet that do not work that way. The cheap one I tested, it took days to cool down everything that was in there, and then the temperature was off like 10 or 15 degrees, if I remember correctly. I would suggest buying something smaller and making it work for your trip than buying something big that's cheap. I can't see relying on my food being in something cheap because you probably won't even realize it happened until you get to camp and all of a sudden, you know, everything in there is warm. And if you've got like milk or something in there, you have no idea how long that's been off for. Uh, so that's just me. I'm overly paranoid. And if I'm going to spend money on something like this, I'm going to buy something that has some quality behind it, something that I can actually trust and something that has good reviews. So really do your research on this kind of stuff. I would say as far as an entry fridge goes, I don't know if I would go below something like an Iceco. These are affordable. They have customer service. They're a company out of California. In my opinion, it's, it's the way to go. Other points with the refrigerator is resupplying at grocery stores and stuff. It's just gonna be so much easier. You don't have to worry about getting specific foods that are kind of leak proof in their packaging. Of course, you can bring Tupperware and stuff, but then you're relying on Tupperware. Everything's gonna try to float to the top. It's just, you know what I'm saying. It's a hassle using a cooler. Of course, it's not necessary. You can make those work but a refrigerator will make a long-term trip just so much more enjoyable. This is gonna get you more use and more satisfaction in the long run. Okay, so let's talk about the kitchen in your four-wheel drive setup. This is very important. So base camping is a very different experience. If you're used to camping, you've done this your whole life, but you're getting into this kind of travel, the last thing you want is a kitchen that's gonna take forever to set up at night and take forever to break down. Because you have to worry about things like in some states you got bears, other states you got raccoons and stuff that'll just come in and just take advantage of your camp. I've seen that before, they come in like little ninjas. There's going to be times that you get to camp late, whether you're traveling between states or whether you're doing a week-long trip in your local area, there's just gonna be days where maybe you get stuck somewhere and it just ends up taking that much longer to get somewhere or you run into snow or you run into rain, things like that, it happens or a breakdown. And so this kind of is a multifaceted uh, topic here. So first and foremost is you wanna have a quick setup. I set my stove right here and then I can reach the propane from right here. And so it's just real quick, I can have everything going. And then normally I have a container right here it's winter, so I haven't been using it, but I have two Wolfpack boxes that sit right here and they have my pots and pans and stuff in them. It's as simple as that. And so I can go to making dinner really quick. So aside from that and back to refrigerators, is I have the DFG slide here with my Snowmaster fridge. This is the fridge I've been using for a five years, six years, something like that. 
And so I can get to everything that's inside of this refrigerator rather quickly. And then I have a cutting board that comes out and this is, a, this is the redesigned fridge slide, I guess. I haven't mentioned this in a video before, but um, I did replace my old one because the bearings were finally going out. Point being is that I have a quick access so I can set up my stove, I can get my pans out and I can get to the food and I can be cooking really quickly. So the other thing is this fridge in particular, it gives me a surface. Sometimes I gotta take things on and off, but because it's a dual door, I'll put stuff over here and I'll have food set up here. You'll see that in some of my videos. We'll be cooking over here. I'll have stuff set up down here. Sometimes I have things up here and then um, I can just get to everything. The other part of my personal kitchen setup is I have this Blue Ridge Overland bag that has my spatulas, my spoons, and some of my spices and stuff in it. So I can do everything very quickly. And then I have my over kitchen light right here and i did opt for the hardcore lighting um, these are not sold in the united states right now but i'll put some links down below because they are planning on relaunching in the united states i love their stuff that's what i'm using up here too we'll get more into that shortly but having a light over your kitchen is huge i like the white and orange because the bugs won't be jumping into your pasta or whatever it is and then also uh i've been using and i've mentioned this in other videos as well I've been using the Dometic faucet. This thing is so nice to have. The water system I have hooked up, we'll get into that in a minute as well. But this system is just awesome because I can just hook up to it, bam, bam. I can get to some water just by doing that and uh, I can fill up a pot, start making something to eat. The next thing is one of these water boilers. Uh, a lot of people just call these generically a jet boil. This is an MSR reactor. There's different brands out there. There's jet boil, there's electric kettles that you can plug into your, uh, your portable power station. I've never used those before, but uh, I might do that in the new truck. We'll see what happens. But anyway, it's just these are dead reliable and I can boil water. I can make simple meals with it. It's only good for boiling water. Like you can't make anything in this because the bottom gets so hot, it'll just burn everything. If I'm doing oatmeal packs or I've gone over in some of my videos, how I do like a, uh, an omelet bag, I can just boil that in this. There's hardly any effort that goes into it. Screw the top onto the canister, light it up, and then I have water boiling and Natalia makes matcha with it. I make, uh, I make usually my breakfast with it. But point being is that um, it is very effective, it's very useful, and you can get some versions of these from other companies for less than hundred bucks. It's all about fast because the faster it is, the less stressful it is. If you get to camp at 10 o'clock at night and you're hungry and the spouse is hungry and uh, it, it can just become like a whole thing and it's nice to have it to where it's set up to where it's super easy. I mean, it's not uncommon for myself, myself and Natalia to stop on the side of the road and even make lunch back here. And we'll just make a sandwich here on the little tabletop. I do highly advise having a nice little tabletop of some sort, even if you got a home make it. Having something like this, we can go through and we can make sandwiches back here and just hang out at like a gas station along our route. It really does make life just that much better. So a lot of my experience comes from backpack hunting. And uh, I used to spend a lot of time in the backcountry hiking in and uh, basically living in a little teepee for, you know, up to like a week at a time. And we'd go out looking for elk. And so you kind of learn how to pack accordingly and how to uh, pack your food accordingly and have things like the little uh, MSR reactor stove that I have. And another part of that is you get used to eating things like uh, this is green belly. The reason for me bringing this up is this is a 645 calorie a meal doesn't look like much it's basically like a giant cliff bar but it has all the nutrients uh all the good stuff in it it's got a lot of fat in it, a lot of protein in it and they actually taste pretty good but the reason i carry them is because you never know if you're going to get stuck somewhere and you're waiting for somebody to come get you or something like that or if you're by yourself and you're just an ape like me i'm not that picky about food so if i'm traveling by myself sometimes and i'm filming all night and i just don't want to deal with cooking something i will eat one of these and i'm telling you uh, this kind of stuff, you drink it with water and it kind of expands in your stomach and you will feel like you ate a meal with one of these. There's these, there's tipping foods like I used in the Skinwalker Ranch video. Uh, and then there's of course stuff like Mountain House and things like that. There's a lot of different options and I definitely recommend you keep some of those in your vehicle. Even if you don't plan on eating them all the time, keep a few of them with you in case something happens. Like say you get stuck in traffic or there's an accident or uh, a storm comes in or you break down, anything like that you wanna have food with you, of course. So I highly, highly recommend that you carry some sort of backup food or in the event that even your refrigerator gives out or say you're carrying a cooler and um, your food gets saturated with water. You don't have to be like, oh God, we gotta go back three hours to go find town somewhere so we can eat something. Always carry some extra sort of food. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I have for kitchen stuff. 
And we'll get more into the water system here in a bit, but that's related and also not related. Okay, so next up is awning. And you cannot convince me that a tent is more important than an awning. And the reason for that is for, again, this is for long-term travel. If you're doing short-term stuff and you wanna have a nice tent, that's great. But when you see advertisements of people hanging out in the tent the whole time, that is not comfortable at all. You're basically hunched over. And I know that Alucab has certain solutions for that now. And I've shown on here uh, last year when I did my new, I think I was doing a new gear video or something. I showed that you can buy like those stadium seats and use them in your tent, but it's not enjoyable. When you see ads for people drinking coffee and having a beer or something in their tent, it's not practical. Nobody's really doing that. It's great for advertising and marketing, but it's not realistic. So the flip side is if you are going on a trip, the last thing you wanna do after spending a bunch of time sitting in your vehicle all day is having to sit in the vehicle or sit up in the tent. It's just not that great of an experience. You're there for nature, most likely. And so having an awning to sit under, and I'm talking a quality awning. Of course, I use Alucab. I love the Alucab brand. And this will just make the whole experience better. And you can hang out under here, whether it's snowing, whether it's raining. Um, obviously for mine, I've got this light strip. Normally it's got three light strips that I put on myself, but uh, I burned up the controller. So um, anyway, long story. But uh, I do recommend doing some sort of a lighting system. I did a separate video on that years ago that I'll link. But um, having a system like this is so much more beneficial. If I had to go on a trip with a new vehicle and I had to choose between an awning and a ground tent, or a rooftop tent like the Alucab, I would choose to have the awning. If I'm gonna have to live out of the vehicle for multiple weeks, this is what I'm gonna go for. There's so many times that me and my friends, me and my wife, we've sat under this awning while it rains, and it's just one of those things, it's beautiful. You get to watch the rain go through. Um, I'm getting ready to release a video soon in Colorado where that was happening back in August. It was like snowing on me slightly. It's one of those things when you have a good quality awning, that you are just underneath it and you get to witness nature doing its thing. Again, I like things that are quick to set up because especially on long trips, when you're doing that over and over and over, if you're having to pack something up and fold up legs and put the walls and stuff on, those things can be nice, but they get old pretty quick. So I recommend like a freestanding awning. Alucab was one of the first companies to do this. I know there's a million out there that are cheaper and they're this and they're that. So I'll shut up about Alucab, but I do recommend you get a quality unit because it does make a big difference on uh, just your quality of life out there because sometimes you just need to be out of the vehicle and enjoying things. And I mean, I've stood under this and watched rain just pour off of it so many times. And just thinking about it right now, I can't wait for it again, spring's coming. A good awning like this, it truly is a game changer because when I grew up camping, whenever it was raining, it was just like, oh, we're about to hit a miserable time right now. That is not the case anymore. These awnings have like a reflective material in them. So they actually bounce some of the light back away from them. So when you're underneath them, uh, of course it's shade, but you can truly feel that there's like, it's cooler under here. So with the awning, we use a thermocell. And I've talked about these in videos before. Uh, this is such a small thing. It's not sexy. It's not something people get super excited about. I'm telling you, these are the best system for when you're traveling into you know, most of the cool places have mosquitoes. So I do prefer the electric thermocell because uh, the, the butane sometimes at high elevations doesn't work right. And so you're basically trying to ignite something that's not gonna ignite. So your mosquito repellent isn't gonna work. These things can be expensive. The cartridges can be expensive. Man, I do not care. I will pay for it. Once you use one of these, it changes the game. And part of that is when you have an awning and like on the Alucab here, it has this little pocket. Once you fold this leg up, and uh, it should work with any awning, as long as you don't have like a crazy breeze. But with a crazy breeze, you usually don't have a lot of bugs anyway. I put the thermocell right there. What it does is it rises and it takes about 10 minutes after you get to a campsite. What it will do is it will fill up the top of your awning with the stuff that it's burning off. If you walk outside of your awning when you have one of these on, you'll find that mosquitoes are landing on you. When you step underneath your awning, it's almost like you've created invisible walls around it and it is so nice. These things don't work with like flies or gnats or anything like that. Thermocell, I'm telling you, and this is a huge advantage with the awning. You can turn these on and they work pretty good without an awning, but it works so, so good when it's underneath something like this. So anyway, I had to add that in because that's a huge benefit of having something like this on your vehicle. Real quick, I need to touch on power solutions. My personal preference is a dedicated battery system from Red Arc. And these are more of a permanent solution, but offer nearly endless power to those who drive a little bit every day. 
These kinds of systems can be as simple or complicated as you're willing to make them, and I have some older videos where I cover these that I will link below, but with my new truck build coming, I will be covering more on the channel about these systems, so subscribe for updated and better content covering those. But of course, the easiest option for beginners are the portable power stations. And these systems offer convenience since they're an all-in-one solution, but I find them somewhat limiting due to their slow charging, but they seem to work well for plenty of people. And I've reviewed plenty of them on this channel, so I'll link those videos below for you to check out. As I started filming more of my adventures and uh, just doing more stuff and getting more uh, ambitious with my trips, like going to Mexico and stuff like that, I built one of these with a Plano case on the back. I'll put in some clips of that. And we went to Mexico and it did okay. But that case was quickly falling apart and it was just a hacked up uh, thing for that trip in particular because I wanted to take snorkeling gear. And so as soon as I got back, I was like, okay, I have to make that a permanent function on the FJ just because I loved having the extra storage, especially for you SUV guys. I mean, it makes such a big difference having something like this. Just having storage in general, whether that is having to put it on a roof rack or something like that, I don't put very heavy stuff in here, but man, it is just so nice to have this because on a lot of trips, what I've done is I even put my clothes in here and it takes those clothes out of the cab of the FJ and it has made our traveling so much better. It's such a small amount of space. You wouldn't think that it made that big of a difference for us, but I'm telling you, it is truly nice to have. Obviously on something like an FJ, this is a small amount of room, but even if I had a Forerunner or Land Cruiser or something, Having something like this is big. And I did have to custom build my, my rack back here and everything. But again, you don't have to have it over the spare tire. You could do it on the roof rack or something like that. But just having a case like this that can lock is so, so huge. So with cargo cases, even if it's a regular Pelican case, I think the main thing is just having a way to lock it. Make sure you carry some padlocks. I carry a few more in the back of the seat in case I need those. But I'm just telling you, for you SUV guys especially, this is a game changer. I already have my storage purchased for the new build, and uh, I'll show you some of that here in a few minutes. But this Pelican, it looks good on the back with the Alu cab, and that's part of the reason I chose it. And it's a secure system, and I'm very happy with it. Okay, so next up is water purification. Having water purification gives me peace of mind, even if I'm filling up from somewhere. Uh, obviously, if you go into a grocery store or something like that, you're filling up water, you don't have to worry about it. If I'm here in Colorado or some other state and there's crystal clear cold water flowing from a stream or something, I love to be able to fill up a can and drink that water. And uh, even though it looks clean, it's not clean because uh, you can get uh, illnesses like Giardia and stuff basically from animals pooping in the water. And so you need to filter that out. And even if you're filling up somewhere uh, that's kind of questionable, if they've got uh, potable water set up and you can fill up, this makes me feel better. And these systems have a charcoal filter built into them. Uh, you have to replace them fairly often, but it does make the water taste better. I've recently started testing out the Lifesaver. I'm gonna do a whole comparison video on various types of water filters. This one is pretty expensive, but this is much more durable than what the Hydro Blue is here. And obviously this one looks like it can mount into a typical jerry can holder, which is what was attractive about it for me. I'm gonna do a comparison with some of the cheaper options as well. But for now, uh, this is for the sake of this video, these are the two that I'm gonna show you. Things like this, when I went through Mexico, this was something that it was, I was definitely gonna have my water filter just because the, the drinking water is just different down there. People get sick from it all the time. Another advantage with these types of systems are for, uh, for showering. Of course, this one has like an actual shower head on it. This one had one as well, but I ended up cutting it off because it was kind of cheap and it broke several times. This one looks like it's higher quality, but I haven't used it much yet, so I'm not gonna um, say something that I don't know is true, but um, it looks like it's built a little bit better. But anyway, uh, you could use this to rinse off, but also if you have an actual shower system, you can use a system like this to produce clean water if you don't want to shower with just like river water, for instance. And so anyway, maybe I'm a little too paranoid, but I do like carrying a water filter myself. Uh, it just makes me feel better. And I'm gonna be using this one more just to test it out. I've been using this one for several years. So make sure you subscribe for the water purification video that I will be putting out because I'll be sharing some pretty interesting stuff and going over different systems and how they perform. I personally do not travel without a water filter of some kind. The bonus is a survival tool, but the reality is convenience. I don't have to worry as much about water leaking out of a container. I've been able to offer water to remote hikers and just having extra water for cooking if I need it. And this also allows me to carry less water weight in areas that I know that I'll cross paths with a stream and saves having to run into town. 
I spend enough time in civilization, so once I hit the trail, I like to avoid it until I need to go home. Okay, so on to the next one. Let's talk about showers. So this might seem obvious, but you're going to want a shower on a long trip, of course. So um, I've used various systems here. The geyser actually, I do love this. It's locally made. This shower can't wash Natalia's hair because her hair is very long and uh, very thick. And so she has not been able to wash her hair with this. So especially on long trips, um, this has pretty much been phased out. I will take this when I go solo somewhere. It just so happened that our shower failed. And I've heard about this with the geysers that the valve breaks. And so now we have a full jet. We still have another more than a week of this trip. So I'm really hoping Geyser can fix us up at the expo. And uh, we we're able to get replacement parts, but then I saw the Kakadu system at the event. And man, I, uh, I quickly fell in love with this thing. I did a whole video on it. So this is a very cool shower. And the difference here versus some of the other ones that you've seen over time, like some of the uh, Camp Luxes and stuff like that, those are cheaper systems. Those require more, like you'll see them built into Pelican boxes and stuff like that. They take up a lot of space. They're not very compact and you need to have a power source and um, you need to have, it's just kind of a setup. I had one on my Conqueror camper and even though it was hard set, like that was great. But if I had to use one at camp, I don't want to have to hang it from a tree and hook all this stuff up. It's just not for me. Um, again, I like quick, easy setup. So you plug in power, you plug in your pickup, which is also a water pump, and then you plug in your shower head. Then you have a hot shower so I can wash up in the morning with this. The thing about this is this thing has a battery built into it. And so it is ignition and everything is based off of its own battery system. It uses a small propane tank. So it's on demand hot water and it works instantly. You can throw this into a stream or something. Or again, if you're purifying water into a bucket, then you can just throw this in your bucket. I don't want to talk bad about geyser because I do like this system. And for you guys that aren't familiar with this, I've done a review on this as well. And it's basically a, a long sponge system. It's kind of a sponge bath. It's electric, or you can use like a jet boil, like I was showing and uh, you can dump hot water into it with uh, like one third boiling water, two thirds is gonna be cold water, and it'll tell you the temperature of the water on here. And you basically take a glorified sponge bath. The hose issue that I had was because I had a very old version of the hose. That's all been corrected and stuff now. They're built in a better way, more durable way. The shower system's big because there's gonna be times that maybe on a trip you guys wanna go out to eat, or maybe you want to uh, go to an event like what we did. And the other thing is sometimes you're gonna have to wash your clothes, and having something like this, being able to hand wash your clothes is a big one because during this amount of time, you're outdoors all the time, your clothes are getting dusty, you're sweating all day long. Most of us will wear our clothes multiple days in a row. And so um, your clothes will start to stink and stuff. And so at some point on a long trip, especially if you have like a favorite shirt or you only brought one t-shirt when you wish you would have brought multiples, that might start stinking and it's just like, all right, I gotta wash this thing and hang it up to dry. So a shower can come in for multiple uses like that. And then of course you can wash your dishes with it. Something like this, you can have a designated sponge to use it for that, but it's a little bit more work because you're gonna have to heat up water, let it boil, dump it in there. And there's like more of a system as something like this just plugs in and it works. So uh, I have tried this at high altitude, works great. This um, is electric heated, so it's no problem at all, or you're using your stove to heat it. So washing yourself, washing your clothes, washing your dishes, and of course, washing your dog, because when we went to Mexico, the first day we were on the beach, Blue went and rolled over some dead fish that had washed up on the, on the beach. Man, I, that was one of those things. So we've made it to the San Felipe beach, the first one that we're gonna be at. Blue is already rolling over on dead fish. Anybody that has a dog will understand that. Oh, national parks and stuff often have showers. We've utilized those before too. And those are, you know, that's a real shower. But as far as having a portable system, it makes everything so much better. So I have to say this from personal experience, having things like this, I know it's expensive and this is a cheaper option. There's other cheaper, cheaper options, but you need to make it more enjoyable for your spouse. I've lucked out that my wife really likes to go camping. She loves going on these trips. She loves traveling. That's not the same for a lot of you, and I, I understand that. The more you can make them comfortable when they're with you, if they can still wash their hair, if they can stay away from the mosquitoes, if they don't have to be in the rain all day, those are the things that are gonna make those trips that much better. So uh, anyway, this type of thing can go a long way. So I touched a little bit on clothing and washing your clothes with this, and I'm gonna dive into clothing actually. So let's jump into that. So here's one of my new cases for the new truck. I've decided to go with Zargus cases for my, uh, my roof boxes, just because I'll be able to fit two of them right next to each other. So um, 
It was either two of these or one Pelican. So this is the route I went. So clothing is something for overlanding that people often roll their eyes about. And I totally get it. I'm one of the people that dresses like a zookeeper and I'm totally okay with it. I have no problem being that guy. I wear pants that have all sorts of cargo pockets on them. I would argue that's not an overlander thing, for me at least, that's a camera guy thing because I film all of this stuff on my own. Sometimes Natalie operates the camera, but it's almost always me and I have so much stuff in my pockets. And the reason I'm touching on this stuff isn't just to show you what I'm wearing in my videos. The reason I wear this stuff is because when I was backpack hunting, it's a big thing that you buy the right materials for backpacking, backpack hunting, uh, you buy the right gear for the job. The reason you don't see backpack hunters uh, hunters in general and you don't see backpackers wearing cotton clothes is because uh, bacteria will stick to those clothes and it doesn't dry out as fast. So basically the reason your clothes start to stink is because as you wear them, you sweat into them, bacteria starts to grow under time. It's the same reason your armpits are stinking. And so if you're on a trip and you're wearing the clothes multiple days in a row, if those clothes don't dry out very fast, then it's going to start to stink. And when you're on a multi-day trip, sure you can change your clothes and stuff, but if you're just relying on like i tend to take like maybe three pairs of pants four pairs of pants even on like a two-week trip because i just cycle through them and i let all my clothes dry out and stuff and sometimes you gotta wash it but when you see me wearing these shirts that are the typical like outdoor type of shirts it's for a reason it's because they breathe really well they keep the sun off of me and then the other thing is they don't stink right now i'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt and uh sometimes i'll wear t-shirts in my videos and stuff but you won't see me wearing them really that often. Like on different days, I switch out of them just because cotton starts to stink really fast. I've tried to start selling some of my shirts on the website in like a, like a polyester mix just because it's a little bit better. And so whenever I'm out, like I don't wanna have to worry about that stuff. But I do buy technical clothes and this stuff is expensive, I understand. You can get clothes that have these types of materials at Walmart and stuff like that. You don't have to spend a ton of money. On our Pacific Northwest trip, I didn't have to wash any of my laundry. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. And it's a lot of it is because I wasn't carrying jeans with me. I almost never carry jeans. Day to day in my life, I wear cheap clothes. I wear $20 clothes. When I go out into the wilderness, I learned from backpacking that having the right stuff just makes all the difference. And so that just bleeds over into my off-roading and my overlanding um, gear. Oh yeah, and I already put all that stuff away, but I wanted to add one more thing. When you go into humid environments, like somewhere like Arkansas, uh, I forgot how humid it was the last time I went there. And something I noticed in the dead of summer is I was wearing a t-shirt for that trip and in one day, and I'm not exaggerating, anybody who spent time there can comment below, your, your cotton shirts will literally grow like an inch or two because there's so much moisture in the air. And so it'll literally, elongate the cotton fibers until you wash it and dry it again. It's crazy how humid places can be. Um, here in the West, we don't have to worry about that. But again, on those trips, when I wear like a technical fabric, I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. One more bench top thing here, a portable toilet. I need to add that a lot of the reasons some of the trails are getting closed in places like Utah, um, some of those are getting shut down because they're being so trashed. In those areas, you are supposed to travel with a portable toilet, whether you like it or not, um, especially in the national park areas, if you're going into like Elephant Hill or some of those trails, you're required to have one and you can get a ticket if you don't. These aren't as gross as what people tend to think they are. They obviously fold up really compact. The legs can fold out on these, but this is a cheap thing. I think they're like 50 or 60 bucks. It's very durable and uh, it'll come with some of the waste bags. They do a good job of keeping the smell out of the environment and uh, they're like a double seal system. This is the clean waste one. There are different systems. It just depends on how much room you have for something. Mine is obviously taking a beating in the back of the FJ, but anyway, it's a simple thing that in some places is required and in other places, you're just gonna want it. We were at a paid campground in Missouri meeting up with friends and we went into one of the pit toilets and I had a headlamp on and it was at night. <laughs> And I saw down into that toilet totally by mistake. And I saw things crawling around in there. And it was one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. I'm not very squeamish with that kind of stuff. I don't know what kind of bugs were swimming in that, but I'm talking thousands of insects were swimming around in that water way down there. And it freaked me out. <laughs> it was just one of those things. So having something like this in those situations where it's just like, nah, I'll just use this. I'm telling you, it is, uh, it is very nice to have. You're not always gonna use it, but having the option for that 
or even if it's a side of the road emergency because you ate some bad food or something, you know, you're gonna stop at gas stations and stuff like that. But there's other times you're gonna stop at those places and they're gonna be like, nope, you can't use it, we don't have it. And so then you gotta go pull over into some trees or something and um, you need to use it. So people don't like talking about pooping, but it's part of life. So I thought I would cover that. So I think one of the most common things for a lot of people is that they get into this and they wanna have a rooftop tent and rooftop tents are awesome. I personally love them. As you've seen, I've camped a bunch in this thing, but what I see a lot of people jumping into is they want to get one so bad that they buy something that they can afford rather than something they need. And I have several friends that have gone down this route. They'll buy a tent and then they quickly realize that they made a mistake and they just basically threw like 600 bucks away. Cause even if you're getting one for like 800 to $1,200, you're not gonna be able to resell that thing for very much. I just really advise that you do not buy a soft shelled tent, the soft sided tents that have the zipper bag on them. I had two of those when I first started getting into the rooftop tent thing. I cannot put into words how much better something like the Alucab is versus a soft sided rooftop tent. Having a tent of this quality is one of those things where if I had to do it all over again, I would buy an awning and a cheap tent, cheaper tent like a ground tent, buy good bedding for it, and then later on, I would save up for this and I would buy a quality tent. And there's more to it than just being like, oh, I've got like a, an aluminum tent. You know, it's, there's, there's a lot more going on here. And I've covered this in several videos. I will cover it again now. Something about a tent of this quality is more than just like, it's gonna last a long time. It's the fact that when I'm in this and there's a wind storm, like in PNW episode one, we camped on the beach and it was so windy and it was cold and standing out in that wind was just, you know, we just come from like 90 degree temperatures. And then all of a sudden it was like 40 degrees and blowing hard outside. We parked this into the wind to where the wind would ramp right over the top of it. We slept great that night. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I've had to do that many times. I did that in Mexico. I do that in Colorado. If a windstorm starts kicking up at any given time, no matter where I am at camp, I can leave Natalie up here, disconnect the ladder really fast and I can reposition the FJ to where all of a sudden it's facing into the wind and then the wind issues are pretty much gone and we can sleep fine. This is such a durable, well-built, like miniature cabin that we don't have sleep issues like we used to have with the soft side to rooftop tents. When there's wind, you can almost feel that the tent picks up off of you and it's very hard to sleep. Some people can sleep through that. If you can, I'm very happy for you. You're probably one of the few out there that can do that because you'll start getting anxiety of like the wind is driving you crazy. You're not sure if the tent is about to leave the top of you and just leave you laying on a mattress up there. Um, they're very noisy and they're just really not that comfortable. The thing about a soft sided rooftop tent is they feel like a tent. This does not feel like a tent to me. Natalia is the same way. You climb inside of this thing and it feels like you were in a small little home. There's a certain sense of security that you get where it's just at the end of the day, you lay down and there's no concern of like, if the wind picks up or if the rain picks up or the snow picks up, there's no concerns whatsoever. And that peace of mind is worth the cost of a tent like this. It's hard to put into words until you've owned something like this and spent time in something like this, but there is no way I would ever go back to a cheaper tent. I'll tell you right now, I've had offers from different companies to use their tents in my videos, tents that I can give you an affiliate link for, and sell you these tents and I make money. I've turned all of them down. I would pay for it again. I didn't get any discount. I don't get paid for saying that. So if you're gonna spend money on a rooftop tent, buy quality, wait it out, buy quality. But if you don't have the money for that now, get a ground tent. You're gonna be less in the wind in a ground tent just because you're closer to the ground. And so when you buy a cheap rooftop tent, it's putting you up there and those don't do good in the wind. So I promise you, you'll regret buying one of those. Almost everybody regrets buying one of those and puts it up for sale and starts looking for something like this. So again, I'm gonna get into something that I've plugged on the channel before, but I do think that it is just amazing. So the last thing is making your sleeping space comfortable. And uh, whatever that means to you, you know, like I was saying, um, I do not like soft side rooftop tents. One of the things that I've done, I've talked about in another video, is like I did stuff like I changed my zippers to soft pull zippers, so I don't have to hear these rattling in the wind. And so whenever this shakes, there's basically no noise that comes from it. So little improvements to your space can just go such a long way. Like for instance, I have this hardcore light in here. And uh, again, whenever I am getting into the tent, I can turn it onto orange. So usually when I unzip this thing at night, I'll turn the light on in here, it burns basically no power. And then I know that bugs aren't gonna be sticking to the screen waiting to get into the light. And so when we're down there brushing our teeth, getting ready to come up into the tent, 
we've got a light source in here and that's something that I added on on my own. Another thing is something I've talked about a lot before and that for me is the Hess mattress. I know I name dropped those guys a lot. Um, they are a small company. They are making the best mattresses for camping that I've ever found. They are so, so incredible. I mean, they add warmth to your tent. They add softness to your tent and there's no air in this thing. This mattress has been one of those things that's changed how we sleep so much. It's been such an improvement over anything else we've had before. They're just building one product line and that is a sleep system. There are different size mattresses. There's different sizes of these uh, down comforters. Once I had the Hess mattress up here, I was like, I'm ordering their pillows and I'm ordering a dog bed. And so now I've got all sorts of Hess stuff. I've spent as much as some people spend on a rooftop tent just in bedding, but there's no way I will ever regret it because I'm also getting older. And so getting quality sleep is more and more important as time goes on. And just being ready for the next day's adventures, getting a good night's sleep is such a big deal. Make it comfortable for you and your spouse if you're traveling with them. But uh, with the Hess stuff, I mean, this has improved my rooftop tent so, so much. They do make these for the flip style tents as well now. So first they were making the mattresses and stuff and the pillows. Now they make a down comforter and I'll get into that in a second. And then they make sheets and everything. And I recently ordered the rest of this system. I'm gonna have the entire Hess system. I did pay for it. Uh, the comforter, they actually sent me for free when they first launched. But the sheets, um, they probably would have given them to me if I would have asked for them, but they're a small company. And I like supporting some of these small companies that are just changing the game. And um, so I ordered the top sheet. So basically the top sheet will attach to this comforter on the bottom side and it'll prevent me from having to wash it as much. And with down anything, if you've ever washed down bedding, it is a pain in the ass. So the top sheet's gonna save me hassle down the road and uh, just prolong the life of this thing. So I ordered that, I ordered their pillowcases because everything they're making that I've touched is phenomenal. It is some of the best camping gear that I have found. At the bottom of your, your mattress, this cinches around that and, and it can cinch up way more. I just made this bed. But anyway, what it does is it makes a sealed foot box. So whenever it's cold at night, your feet aren't getting into or coming out of the blankets, which is pretty awesome because uh, as you can see down here, I keep a handmade, I made this out of imp uh, Apex insulation. And what this does is it kind of creates another layer of uh, insulation down here where normally it's just aluminum and cold air kind of, or not cold air, but cold temperatures kind of leak through on cold nights. So. What I've done is I've stuffed that in there and then if we're ever too cold, we can pull this out and then we have another blanket. And me and Natalie have both have one of these little whoobies. I made this one, I bought the other one. But now that we have this, I'm not sure that I need that because our feet are never gonna really come out of the blankets unless we choose to uncinch this. And then it's like a regular blanket. If you were to put this mattress into a ground tent, you will sleep so well. I just wanna touch on making your sleeping space as good as you can make it. and. If that means skipping out on the cheap rooftop tent and just getting a ground tent and spending the money on bedding, it's going to be better for you. It's going to be better for your spouse. And again, you want them on your side for this, guys, because I know so many of you have issues getting the lady to go with you go, to go camping. Part of the reason is because, you know, a lot of you guys, <laughs> you're roughing it pretty good. I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's not just about you. It's about your spouse. And the more comfortable you can make them the more they'll be willing to go out and go on these adventures. So I'm very lucky that Natalie grew up in a similar fashion than I did. She loves being outside. She doesn't mind this kind of stuff, but there are plenty of people that, you know, it's not their favorite thing in the world. So you can have the comforts of home. It does cost some money to get there. When I was editing the Pacific Northwest content, I was really realizing how nice of a system we have. And, you know, obviously I'm well aware of it, but uh, when I see that footage and I'm like, man, we lived out of this thing for two weeks and we were very comfortable doing so. And I can't wait to go out and do more of it. And I've got more videos that'll be coming here pretty soon. So I just wanted to touch on some of the things that I really advise you guys to look into for your uh, longer adventures that you might have coming up because I do find that these things are the most important. Making your truck look cool, making your truck, you know, armored up and stuff, that's, that can come later. I'm telling you right now, that stuff can wait. Okay, so I'm gonna leave links for all of this stuff below. Um, some of it I have affiliate links for, some of it I don't. But um, I'll leave links for all that stuff so you guys can check it out. And I hope this was helpful for some of you. I spent a lot of time finding a good system for a vehicle of this size. And I think it will uh, work across the board for other people's vehicles. But if I were to loan this vehicle out to somebody who's never used it before, I think they would find like this is a very comfortable 
compact setup. And so uh, part of the reason is all of the things that I've gone over today. And I think those are some of the most important things. So consider how you're packing, consider some cargo storage and some lockable storage, consider lighting, water filters and stuff. And I will link all the expensive stuff and then some of the cheaper options below. Mattresses, I'm not gonna recommend cheaper mattresses because I've never used any of them that I've liked. But anyway, buy once, cry once if you can, buy good gear, uh, you will rarely regret buying good gear once you've used it a time or two. All right, I don't really know how to end this video, but I just wanna share some of the stuff that I was thinking about while I was editing the recent PNW trip. I will leave links for that video uh, series below. You guys can check that out. And anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.